evening, everybody. We are uh, adapting and changing it up a little bit tonight. Uh, welcome to our living room. Let's just lift our hands right now, wherever we are, and just worship Jesus.
wishes to you. Lord, turn his face toward you. Let's just pronounce a blessing over you tonight. Oh, Lord bless you.
say amen. I 
to how big God is. He's bigger than the viruses. He is our healer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is.
Every time we speak his name, it's on display, on display. Oh, my faith is on display. Every time I speak his name, every time I whisper Jesus. So I will not be afraid. I will not be in fear. No, no. But I will listen closely for his word. I will hear in the morning, in the noontime. salvation of your God tonight. For He is good, He is faithful, oh He's never let us down, and He never will let us down. He is faithful, He is strong, He's the King of kings all around. Mm, how great is our God. Won't you sing with me? How great our God. And all will see how great. How great is our God. Since my soul, oh my Savior, come to thee. you're always with us. We have the Holy 
Spirit on the inside of us, leading us and guiding us into all truth. Father, we just make a declaration even over our lives and over our minds that we will choose to walk in faith, not in fear. We choose to keep our eyes fixed on you, the author and the perfecter of our faith, Jesus. Come on, just say his name tonight over your mind. You have the mind of Jesus. You have the mind of Christ. Just say his name, Jesus. The Bible says that demons tremble in the very sound of that name. Oh, Jesus, we thank you that you're Lord of our lives. This coronavirus did not catch you off guard. You didn't have to go looking for some lost power. Try to muster something up. This enemy has already been defeated. And so with thanksgiving in our hearts tonight, we just thank you that the coronavirus is squashed. And it will not live out as long as people are even saying it's going to live out. Father, I just thank you that you are our healer. Thank you that because the blood of Jesus has been applied by faith, we can walk fear free. I am safe from my enemy. I call to the Lord, you answer me. As for the Lord, his way is right. For all who are kind. We just thank you for peace now tonight, Father, that rules and reigns in our minds, in our families, in our homes, in our communities, in our state, in our region in our nation. We just thank you, Father, right now. We speak calm to the storm. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us authority. And so we use the keys tonight. We take authority. And we will walk confidently in faith, not by sight. And we'll not live in fear. We make a decision to keep our eyes on Jesus. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen and amen. Can you join me? Well, we are uh, thankful that you have uh, joined us here in our living room tonight. Um, we are in the middle of doing church a little bit different right now until uh, the gathering uh the call to not gather is uh, changed, and we are uh, back in the church, uh, gathered together. This is uh, right in the middle of Holy Week, and uh, this is the week leading up to uh, the Passion. This is the Passion Week. This is the week leading up to Easter. <laughs> Our dog is not happy. and uh, This is just family at the Ligaris house. Um, it's probably not perfect. Like yours isn't perfect, but it's healthy. And um, Roxy just, once she gets comfortable, she doesn't like to be. Um, you want to come sit with Daddy? Come on. Come on. Come up here. Good girl. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. <laughs> Everybody's so watching you. <laughs> Everybody on Facebook world is watching you. Stop. You're embarrassing yourself. I'm going to get the, I'm going to get the lion out. Hey. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Um, hey, I just have a couple thoughts that I want to share with you tonight. It may not be um, business as usual. It may not be church as usual. But we know this, that um, God is still on the throne. He's not been caught off guard by all of this. Um, there is some normalcy in all of this. And we want to make you guys aware that um, <clears throat> you can still uh, donate to the church. You can still text to give. 330-536-7054. You can still mail in your tithes and your offerings to Victory Christian Center, Warren Campus, 4257 
Todd Avenue, Northwest, Warren, Ohio, 44485. Amen. Stop licking me. Stop licking me. Uh, we also want to let you know um, there, uh, there is a possible change in the, uh, the communion service on Friday night. Um, I've heard tell uh, that Bishop Thomas is, um, and Pastor Kathy are going to be doing communion from Texas. Uh, most of you know that they have been sequestered. They have been quarantined in Texas. Uh, they, live, uh, they have a house down there next to their daughter and son-in-law and their grandchildren, and they have not been able to come home since all of this has happened. Um, but there is tell that they may be doing communion, a corporate communion, uh, on Friday night. Um, Friday at noon. At noon. I'm sorry, <laughs> Friday at noon uh, from Bishop's homepage, from Bishop. It'll, it'll be on all the church pages. It'll be on all of our church pages, so you can watch right here at Victory Christian Center, uh, Warren Campus Facebook page, or any of the other Victory uh, Christian Center Facebook pages. Um, that means that Friday night at 7 p.m., right here in our living room, we'll also be having communion as well. We uh, are just participating with the promises of God and remembering all that the cross, the realities of the cross of Christ have made available for us. So you have two more opportunities to take communion with the body of Christ, even this weekend, Friday, right here on our Facebook page with Bishop uh, David L. Thomas and Pastor Kathy Thomas. Uh, they'll be, they'll be uh, partaking communion. So you've got some time to get some juice and some bread available, uh, but if you don't have that, you can take, you can use whatever you want, uh, water, juice, a uh, cracker, a pretzel, you can use whatever, what the, the thought is, we're remembering what Christ has done in our feast, and we're reminding ourselves of what the, the cross did for us. So I want to make that available to you, uh, those two chances or to uh, partake of communion. Again, um, you can give to the church anytime, day or night, with the text to give. Again, the number is 330-536-7054. You can mail it in uh, using snail mail, or you can uh, go on uh, bccwarren.com and you can utilize the uh, reoccurring gift if you'd like to do that as well. However you choose to give, um, However you choose to give, my family's talking to me while they're behind the camera. However you choose to give, um, right now, would you just take it uh, and just take it and place it over your heart? Father, we just thank you that your word teaches us that wherever our heart is, there our treasure would follow. Father, we just, we want everything in our lives. We want everything in our lives to speak of you and to, and to speak of our relationship with you. Lord, let our hearts be led by love, our love for you. Father, in sweet communion, I believe that's what you always wanted, was to just be wanted. Even in the garden, you wanted Adam and Eve to want you. And Lord, even as as we have seen the effects of sin on man, we can only imagine the effects of sin on you and the heart break when your family was broken up. Lord, I ask tonight that you would just take our gift, multiply it, cause it to be effective for the furtherance of the gospel here in Warren, in our region, across our nation, and all through the world. I thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Bless your people as they give in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to just make a couple of uh, announcements. Just because we are not gathering together in a building does not mean that the holiday that we are about to celebrate on Sunday has been canceled all across this world. Easter is still on. In fact, the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea is still empty. And we are going to celebrate that on Sunday. If you've attended Victory Christian Center for any amount of time, you understand uh, that, that Sunday morning, we refer to it as our victory celebration. It was when Jesus rose from the dead and led all captivity captive. He led that devil, Satan, he led him and all of his cohorts captive. The Bible says that he gave gifts to men uh, after that, but he led captivity captive. And I believe the devil has never forgotten that. 
And when men and women who know who they are and know who their Jesus is begin to speak the name of Jesus and begin to use the name of Jesus and the authority that he gave us in that name, all hell trembles because they'll never forget when Jesus led them captive. Oh, uh, it's just a glorious time. I can only imagine being there. But I'll tell you this, we're going to see it again with our own eyes. Oh, when Jesus comes back for us. Speaking of which, I want to talk to you a little bit about that tonight. In fact, I woke up this morning uh, real early. My wife and I are usually up uh, when the sun is just coming up. And the first thing out of my mouth today as I woke up was, Jesus is coming soon. You ever wake up with a song or you wake up with a thought and you just say it out of your, your mouth? I went to bed last night um, just conversing with a friend of mine down in Tennessee who's on Facebook and who has just been, um, I, I like to call him a son of Issachar, a modern day son of Issachar because he knows the times and the signs of the times in which we're living in. And I went to bed last night singing that song, that old Andre Crouch song, it won't be long, it won't be long till we'll be leaving here. It won't be long. Remember that song? Some of you might remember it. If you don't, I remember you to, I, I would just love for you to go online, look up that old song by Andre Crouch, It Won't Be Long. And it just sings about the fact that Jesus is coming soon. And every generation, I think, since Jesus left has said, this is the year that he's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. And I fear that the church has lost its urgency in the regard of the fact that we have a blessed hope. We have received his free gift of salvation, but he has not received us yet. And he is coming soon. He's coming very soon to snatch away his church. The Greek word for snatching away or for, for hastily taking away is harpazo. It means to snatch away. It's when the rapture will take place and we will be caught up with him in the heavens. I believe that he's coming back and he's going to take his bride, you and me, back to heaven. This is the blessed hope that we look forward to. And I want to just tell you tonight, it's not an escapist reality, this one that we live like, oh, we just can't wait to get out of here. It's an active, we are waiting, we are praying. And I'm going to read a scripture to you tonight out of James chapter 5, verse 7, that simply says, see how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth. What's he waiting for? He's waiting for everything that Jesus purchased for with his death. Amen. his burial, and his resurrection. And that's why we pray. That's why and how we actively wait. Not, well, maybe he'll come back today. No, in fact, the word tells us that we should be, we should be actively watching the signs of the time and, and being aware of what's happening all around us so that we can know, we can see when his coming is close at hand. I'd like to take a few moments tonight and just share a couple scriptures with you. Um, if you have your Bibles with you, I'd love for you to turn. I, I want to do something, just take a little bit of time and uh, look in your Bibles tonight at Matthew chapter 16. I want to start in chapter, or chapter 16, verse 1. Matthew chapter 16, verse 1. And the Bible says, uh, Then the Pharisees and the Sadducees came testing him, and asked if he would show them a sign from heaven. And Jesus answered and said to them, When it is evening, you say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And then he goes on and says, and verse 3, And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Hypocrites, he says, hypocrites, you know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation seeks a sign, and no sign shall be given except for the sign of the prophet Jonah. And he left them and he departed. And we know what the sign of Jonah was. It was him prophesying about him being in the belly or in the heart of the earth as Jonah was in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. But I want to talk about this tonight and just remind us, guys, Jesus is coming. And I would like to just entitle this, this talk tonight, Ready or Not, Here He Comes. Are you ready? 
Ready or not, he's coming. He's not waiting, but he is waiting. There is a, there is a specific time in which he's coming. And I'm pleading for you tonight, if maybe you've not said, Jesus, will you be my Lord, to make that decision in the time that you're on online with us tonight. I want to just talk about how we can discern the signs of the times. Turn over in your Bible, if you have, if you have it with you. I, I know that this is different, this is old school, but it's using new technology. We don't have the scriptures up on the screens tonight. But if you have your Bible, turn to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 18 says this, That the eyes of our understanding, being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his, Jesus calling, and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Do you know that Paul was praying for the Ephesian church? To have eyes to see, ears to hear, minds to comprehend what the Lord was saying. I want to tell you tonight, this is my prayer for you, even as we watch, that the eyes of your understanding would be open to see and to know and to recognize the signs of the times in which we're living. One more scripture before we dive into this lesson tonight. Turn over to John chapter 5. John chapter 5 and verse 19. This is a very familiar passage of Scripture. In fact, this is our model here at Victory Christian Center. We want to do as the Father says, but in John 5, 19, Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, the Son cannot do anything of himself, but what he sees the Father do, for whatever he does, the Son does also in like manner. We're praying for discernment. We're praying for eyes to see, ears to hear what God is saying through these times. Mm -hmm. Let's just pray these. Father, according to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18, would you open the eyes of my understanding? Father, according to John 5 19, would you give me discernment? Open my ears to hear your voice. Open my eyes, my spiritual eyes, to see what you're doing all around. Let me be able to discern what's happening in the heavens, what's happening in men, what's happening here on the earth, so that we might discern how close your soon return really is. In Jesus' name, amen. We're talking tonight about this. Ready or not, Jesus is coming. I love to hang out in the New Testament. Uh, the New Testament was written to the church, about the church. And one of the, one of the books of the Bible in the New Testament where we can grab and get some great discernment is in the book of Timothy. Timothy was a pastor in the New Testament. He was the spiritual son of the Apostle Paul. And he was writing, Paul, the Apostle Paul was writing a letter to him. And in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, I want you to see something. Paul admonishes his son in the faith about perilous times coming. And he says this, But know this, son, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to their parents. My kids are in here uh, listening to this too. Aren't, and I'm so thankful for kids who are very obedient to their parents. But he, I think that that's important that Paul includes that. Disobedient of the parents is going to be increasing in the end times. And he said, unthankful people, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control. Wow. This, these are the fruits of the flesh right here. This is what happens when, a, when the men of, and the women of this world just give themselves wholly to flesh with no check. Mm -hmm. And it says, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, huh, but denying its power. And from such people, turn away. Guys, we're talking about 
the signs of the times. If I read those just now and you heard that, it was almost as if I was reading that right out of the headlines of USA Today, right off of a, a script from a Hollywood movie, blockbuster movie. This is happening right in front of our eyes. And I see three things tonight as we're looking at the sign of the times, as we're understanding Jesus is coming back, ready or not, how soon is his return? Here's how we can know. Number one, you can look at the condition of the hearts of men. These are the precious fruit of the earth that God is waiting for in James chapter 5 verse 7. And I'm here to tell you tonight, we are not called to be anybody's judge, but we are to examine fruit. And even by the fruit of the flesh that I just read in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, we can see that what man would call rotten, God would call ripe. And I would like to say this, we can understand just how close his soon coming is by examining the fruit of the hearts of men. Have you ever gone to the grocery store? I've been to the grocery store with my wife a couple times, and here's one thing that I am still learning as a man, because I'm not that good at picking out ripe avocados. <laughs> I, like, I like guacamole, but my wife loves avocado yes, on everything. everything. On eggs, on rice, yep. on pasta, chili. on salads, on chili. She likes it on everything. And many times she sends me to Walmart or the Giant Eagle or to the supermarket and she says, honey, get me four or five ripe avocados. <laughs> Why does she say ripe? Because she wants to eat them quickly. I have made the mistake of getting avocados that are too hard. And when they're too hard, they're not quite ready. And it takes them several days to wait until they're ready. So it can't be too hard, but it cannot be too soft because if you squeeze it and it's too soft, that means it's too ripe and it's what we would refer to as rotten. And you cut those open and it's not a beautiful green, it's an ugly brown that's not, not good to eat. No bueno. So getting back to examining the fruits of the heart of men. I would venture and I would propose to tell you tonight that what we look at and we call rotten, God says, ah, they're ripe for the harvest. See, we look across the world and, and sometimes we even look in our neighborhoods, sometimes we even look in our church and we see behaviors of even Christians and we call it rotten. And I would say this, that people, men's hearts, women's hearts, at that point when they're behaving badly, sometimes they're ripe waiting for revival. And you are the one who's supposed to bring revival into them and into their lives. So I'd like to just caution you to be a good fruit inspector, be a good judge of a fruit, and recognize that perhaps it is some rotten fruit that is on behavior. But what God, what you would call rotten, I would pose that God is calling ripe. And the Bible says in James chapter 5, verse 7, the farmer, the farmer is the one who knows how ripe or how unripe a piece of fruit would be. He's looking at the harvest, the precious fruit of the earth, the hearts and the condition of men's hearts here on the earth. And he is saying this, I'm waiting until every precious fruit is ready to receive my free gift of grace. Here's what we know. Jesus paid a lofty and a high price for all of the earth. For all of the earth. And I've used this illustration several times, but how often do we pull into McDonald's, right? And we pull up to the, the drive-in, and they give us our, our order and we pull up and away and we open the bag and realize something's missing. Our french fries are not in there. And how quickly will we whip around there, put it in park, walk back into the store and go, 
demand, you forgot my french fries, I would propose to you tonight. Jesus is waiting for every soul that his blood paid for. He's not willing. He's not willing. That means he doesn't want anyone to perish. That doesn't mean that people won't perish. That's a hard truth. I just like to venture and say this, that God doesn't send anyone to hell. Man chooses whether or not to go there himself. He's waiting for the laborers, you and me, to help partner with him, to pray in this harvest, this last third great awakening. I've learned something about um, harvesting. When my wife Tony and I first got married, both of us had families that had uh, grew up with uh, planting big gardens in our backyards. My dad had a big, huge acre garden. It was huge. Corn, tomatoes, potatoes, beans, pepper, and everything. And my wife Tony's grandparents always had a big garden and she likes fresh produce and I do too and so I tried my hand at doing a garden in the backyard and I quickly found out that I do not have as green thumb as I thought I did. It's something that didn't transfer down through DNA. Um, but there was something that I learned. You have to water the garden especially during the hot summer months, almost on a daily basis. And I saw something in Scripture. I saw the early rain and the latter rain, and I don't have a lot of time to go into that, but the early rain we saw helps the seed to germinate. Seeds like, like humans, like their hearts, before their faith in Jesus, have dry, hardened hearts, and they need to be softened. And so we pray and we ask God and the Holy Spirit to touch their hearts so that the soil of their hearts might be receptive to receive the seed, the Word of God, and to increase their faith. So after sprouting, germinating seeds need a consistent supply of water to continue to grow healthy. Watch this. This too is how people who've softened their hearts and have accepted Jesus as their Savior, they continue growing. And, na and maturing. This process of growing up spiritually happens often in the corporate worship setting. How? The latter rain is often referred to and compared to the presence of the Lord. That outpouring that we read about in Joel chapter 2 verse 23 and in Acts chapter 2, this is what we see as the latter rain, this corporate anointing, the presence of the Lord softening the hearts. I was in a service about a year ago. Uh, my wife and I were in the middle of a worship service. Pastor Alan Weeby was leading worship. The, the anointing had just rolled into the service very strong and you, there were several people that were just sensing the presence of God in a very powerful way and there was a young man on the second row that we didn't even know yet and uh, come to know him now. His name is Joseph and he was experiencing the power and the presence of God in such a rich way that he was literally weeping and trembling under the power and the presence of God. The latter rain was hitting him, softening his heart. And when I gave the call to come and to know this Jesus, he walked to the altar, fell to his knees, and just cried out and gave his heart freely to Jesus. Why? Because the, the softening of his heart took place in the presence of God. And the latter rain uh, had an effect. Do you realize as, as believers in Christ, we are encouraged to be patient like the farmer and simply enjoy the refreshing presence of the Lord for he is faithful to supply it like the rain. I want to turn to two passages of scripture that I saw in Psalm chapter 34. If you have your Bibles, turn over to Psalm chapter 34 and we're going to look at verse 10 Psalm Psalm chapter 34 and it says this the young uh, the young the young lions lack and suffer hunger but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing 
Can I just tell you, when you seek the Lord, when you worship the Lord, He inhabits the praises of His people. When you seek the Lord, when you seek the Lord, when you worship Him, when you praise Him, when you're literally actively seeking Him and worshiping, His presence waters your heart and satisfies even your heart and refreshes the soul, replenishes that which we need in our heart. There's one other scripture that I want you to look at in Psalm 9. I know that this is a little bit different way to look at this, but Psalm 9 says this. Psalm 9 verse 10. And those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. We're talking about being and putting ourselves in that place where that presence of the Lord can inhabit our praises, where the presence of the Lord can touch our hearts, water our hearts, soften the soil of our hearts. And every time we seek Him, He is there, meeting us, refreshing us, satisfying us, softening our hearts. We're talking tonight about discerning the times that we live in, discerning the signs of the times. The first way that we can discern the signs of the times is we can examine the condition of the fruit in the heart of men. The second way that we can discern the signs of the times is we can look and listen to the condition of the nations. There's some incredible things that are happening around the globe right now. Uh, we were privileged in November to be a part of a global prayer alliance down in Houston, Texas <clears throat> with our dear friend Andre Van Zell and several other of our uh, pastor friends, uh, Pastors Don and John and Gibson in Mercy Gate Church in Texas. And we were able to see a gathering of a beautiful group of people from all over the world that were that were telling us what was happening in their nations. Many of them told us of war-torn nations, of uh, famine-gripped nations, of plague-gripped nations, and how the body of Christ was still discerning the times in which they were living, and they were praying and seeking God's face, being refreshed in His presence. But one of the other ways that we can discern the signs of the times is we can see and we can hear what the condition of the nations are all around us within the day and the times that we live in right now in information is happening so fast you can turn on the TV you can flip open your you can flip open your phone you can turn on <laughs> your smart device and you can see just how fast you can be connected to world information and one of the things that I always do is I open it up to my news apps and begin to see, are there any nations at war? What's happening on the global scale? I'd like for you to turn over to Matthew chapter 24. If you're there, we're going to look at, um, starting in verse 3, Jesus is talking about Again, discerning the signs of the times and the end of the age. He talked about this. This is a big deal. We should be talking about this. We should be talking as the church. He's coming soon. How do we get ready? What should we be looking for? What am I looking for? What should I be telling people about? I think we tell them about what Jesus said. Guys, this is a big deal. And for churches to stop talking about the blessed hope, his soon return, is a big deal. We should be talking about this. Look at Matthew chapter 24. We're going to start in verse, um, verse, 20, uh, verse 2. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, that not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. He was talking about the temple in Jerusalem. And as he sat down, on verse 3, on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us when all of these things shall be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age. And in verse 4, Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. If Jesus said, don't take heed that no one deceives you, 
That tells me that there's going to be an opportunity for even the elect, even the body, even his disciples could be deceived. Pay attention. Verse 5 says, For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear, watch this in verse 6, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. Guys, wow, that's Jesus talking. See that you are not troubled or in fear. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. I want to just pause and say this. The end is not something to be scared. He's putting this in here so that we'll be prepared. This is not so that we'll be scared about the end. In fact, we'll be prepared for the end's coming. It's coming, guys. And verse 7 says, or in verse 6, All these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines, pestilences, earthquakes in various places, and all these things will will be the beginning of sorrows. Interesting to me today that right before I, I just laid down on my bed just to rest before I um, came out here to do worship this, this evening, and I flipped open the news and I read this article tonight. The National Geographic put out an article in the national news that said this, the seismic tremors in the earth have lessened right now because of everyone staying at home, there's less travel, there's less movement, and so the seism seismic um, movement on the earth, the noise has been lessened. And you know what they're noticing now? Because all of the, the earth has been quieted because of the, the uh, quarantining that's been happening, they're noticing now more than ever just how many earthquakes and in diverse places, these earthquakes are actually happening. Let me just read this to you again. It says this, And there will be famines and pestilences. Do you know what pestilences is? Pestilences is pandemics and earthquakes in various diverse places all around the earth. Guys, the second way that we can discern the times and the soon coming of Jesus' return is by looking and listening for the condition of the nations and of the world. It's incredible to me that the signs, the signs pointing to his coming are directly tied to the signs that we're to be discerning, the signs of the times. If you have your Bible, go over just one more uh, chapter. I think you only have to go over one more page. Um, but in verse, uh, verse 32, Matthew 24, 32, and 33, it says this. There's a parable of the fig tree that Jesus is giving his disciples. And he says, Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and put forth its leaves, you shall know that summer is near, and you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near. It's at the doors. What he's talking about here, he's prophesying about when Israel would become a nation again. Watch this, because he was talking about a great dispersion that was coming. And he says in verse 34, Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. No man knows the day or the hour, nor even the angels in heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of man be. Guys, we read it in 2 Timothy 3 earlier. We see the, the fruits of the hearts of man. The days of Noah, man was a wicked, wicked individual and wicked things were happening here on the earth and it says this um, for as in the days of Noah before the flood they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away so also will the coming of man be then two men will be in a field one will be taken and the other left 
two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and another left. Watch, therefore, for you do not know what hour the Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. So what do we do? What do we do? Do we live in fear that we're going to miss the rapture? I'm telling you, he did not write this to scare us he wrote this to prepare us. We can discern the times that we live in. Number one, by discerning the hearts of, and the fruits of the hearts of man. Number two, we can look and listen to the condition of the nations. Um, and, and I want you to see this. One more thing that I saw even this week, uh, a couple weeks ago, March 17th, 2020. It was interesting to me. President Trump was quoted. Listen to this. We are at war. All of the nations are at war with an invisible enemy, this coronavirus. Guys, wars, rumors of wars, nations rising against nations, earthquakes, pestilences, earthquakes in various and diverse. Guys, you can't open the, the newspaper headlines right now without seeing what, this, what the Word of God told us we should be looking for. I don't have time to get into every one of these tonight, but I want you to know this. There are three ways that you can actively be watching and waiting. You can be looking at the hearts and the fruits of the hearts of men and what man calls rotten, God calls ripe. And Jesus said that we were to look unto the harvest fields for right now in their wickedness. They're white under the harvest. This harvest is white. That's why we've been doing the Loving the Lost prayer initiative for the last 21 days. Why? Because we see things changing. We see the hearts of the, the rotten men and women. We see these rotten hearts being changed instantly. Some are instant. Some are taking time, but they are being changed. How? Because the Spirit of the living God is touching their hearts. He's opening up the soil of their hearts, softening it so that someone, a laborer, you, me, maybe even someone that they're receptive to, can preach the gospel, the good news that Jesus Christ came to save that which is lost, you and me, and we will have all of eternity to celebrate around the throne. But this is what we're to be doing, actively praying for those who are lost. We see tonight, you can, you can discern the times by checking the fruit of the hearts of men. What, God, what man calls rotten, God calls right. You can discern what the, what's happening in the nations. Nations are rising against nations. Things are happening all over the globe right now at a, at a rapid pace, speeding up. Why? Jesus said these are the beginning of the end. We're getting ready to see the end. And I'm not telling you this to scare you. I'm telling you to prepare you. Get ready. Jesus is coming soon. It could be even tonight. But if he's coming, is your heart ready? The last thing I want to just look at, and it kind of ties into what we were already looking. The Bible says in Romans 8, 19 through 23, that we can look at the condition of the actual earth. Turn over to Romans chapter 8. Most of you know that Romans chapter 8 is my life chapter. It's one of my favorite chapters in the New Testament. But in Romans chapter 8, verse 19, look at what verse 19 says in chapter 8. For the earnest expectation of creation, all creation eagerly awaits the revealing of the sons of God. For creation was subject, subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Guys, it's talking about everything. All that was created by God, the world, all of the animals, the trees, the fields, the earth itself is waiting to be delivered from the bondage 
of the sin and the effects of the sin nature that happened when Adam and Eve fell. Verse 22 says, For we know that the whole creation, watch, groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also know that we have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we were saved, verse 24, might as well read this, in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope, for why does one still hope for what he sees? Guys, I'm telling you, we have received by faith the, the gift of salvation, but salvation fully has not laid hold of us. And Jesus is coming back, and the earth and all of creation is groaning, waiting for Jesus to come back. It's waiting. You see earthquakes ramping up in diverse places. It's the very nature of the earth groaning. It's, it's waiting. Lord, when will you come? When will you release us from the bondage of this, the effects of this sin nature? Even nature is groaning. We can look at the conditions of the earth, all of nature, and we can see these things are are pointing us to the soon coming of Jesus Christ. They're groaning. I want to close with this passage of Scripture and encourage you with one last one as we, as we close tonight. But in Luke chapter 21, Luke chapter 21, and I, I have... Um, I have it here in the New King James Version, but I want to read it to you in the contemporary English version. This contemporary English version has really become one of my favorite um, ways to read, uh, read scripture. And uh, in Luke chapter 21, we're going to start with uh, verse 25. And uh, if you have your phone, or if you have your smart device, uh, you can turn over to the U version Bible and you can read along with me in the contemporary English version. But check this out. In verse 25 of Matthew of Luke chapter 21, this is also the same passage that I read to you in, in Matthew chapter 24. But Luke tells it a little bit different, and this translation is so good. Strange things will happen to the sun, to the moon, and the stars. Before you even freak out about this, you've heard of the blood moons and the super moons. The Bible says in Revelation that these are these these bodies in the heaven, these stars, these will be signs for you, signs for the times. And I need you to understand that even tonight there is a pink moon. It's called the Paschal moon, the moon of the Passover. It's a super moon even tonight reminding us, reminding us that it is pointing, all of creation is pointing us to what? To the hope of the redemption that Jesus is coming soon. Strange things will happen to the sun, the moon, and the stars. The nations on earth will be afraid of the roaring sea and tides, and they won't know what to do. People will be so frightened that they will be faint of what is happening in the world. Guys, we're seeing that right now. Every power in the sky will be shaken. Then the Son of Man will be seen coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When all of this begins to happen, Luke 21 verse 27 says, Stand up straight and be brave, for you soon will be set free. Watch this in the New King James Version, Luke 21, verse 25. Um, it says, and there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and on earth, the distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the, and the waves will, uh, were roaring and men's hearts are failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming upon the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. 
Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. This is my favorite translation. And when they see these things, when you see these things begin to happen, look up. Look up. Lift up your heads. Another way you could say that is change your perspective. Your hope, or your redemption, is drawing near. Jesus is coming. Ready or not, here he comes. You can see it all around us. Everywhere we look, it's in the headlines. Signs pointing to the beginning of the end. And this is not to scare, this is to prepare. We should be discerning these times as Jesus told us to actively wait, praying in the harvest, actively waiting, participating with the farmer to see the precious fruit of the earth come into the body and to an understanding and a knowledge of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He's coming. He's coming soon. I want to ask you tonight, is your heart ready? If Jesus were to come tonight, in the second or the third watch of the night while you were sleeping, would you be caught up? Would you be taken away? Is your heart ready to meet your Jesus, to meet your maker? It was interesting to me. I was talking to a friend of mine uh, just the other day, and he said to me, Michael, do you, do you hear what even... even um, Mighty men here in this in the valley, in the, here in our in our valley, are saying. Um, there was a man who was talking about the uh, the financial situation uh, all across the nation, and he was a, a rich man, and he said, "I've recently invested millions into my company to see this happen. I'm scared to death." He said on live radio, on live TV. This man, this this millionaire, I've I've invested millions. I'm very afraid of what is happening. But he said, bottom line, this is a man who I don't even know if he knows the Lord. He says this out of his, out of his mouth. The bottom line is this. You've got to settle this question. Am I ready to meet my maker? I want to ask you tonight, as we close, if Jesus were to come tonight, are you ready to meet him? The Bible says this. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one, no one comes to the Father except they come through Jesus. Do you know him? Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Do you believe that Jesus came, was born of a virgin, grew to be a man, lived a blameless, pure life, was offered as a sacrifice. The spotless lamb died on the cross, was crucified for our sins, in our place, for our sins. His blood was shed to give us forgiveness and to give us uh, forgiveness with the Father so that we might have everlasting life. If you believe that, there's another step that's required. By faith, you receive that. You believe it in your heart. Now let's confess it. Have you confessed it? Jesus, I receive you. I want you to be my Lord and Savior. I want to give you an opportunity to pray this simple prayer with me. There's nothing magical about this, but I believe that there's someone watching even tonight. You're watching this and you, you, you don't know Jesus. And you've heard even what I've said tonight and, and realized that the end of the age is coming. Jesus is coming to take away the church. I'm telling you, he wants to take all of us. Will you be ready? You can be. You can spend all of eternity in heaven with Jesus and our loved ones. Or you can spend an eternity in hell apart from him. But here's the thing that I know. God sends no one to hell. Man chooses to go there. I want to give you an opportunity to pray with us tonight and receive Jesus as your Savior and to know that should he come back even tonight, you would be caught up with him. If you're praying, I would, if 
you're here with me still and you're watching and you don't know Jesus, I'd like you to just pray this with me from your heart. I'm going to ask my family to say it with me. But I want you to pray this from your heart and believe this in your heart. Father God, Father God I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe Jesus grew to a man, blameless in all of his ways, died on the cross for my sins. His blood washes me clean. Father, forgive me of my sins. I'm so sorry. I repent. I choose to follow Jesus. Be my Savior. I confess you, Lord. Jesus, be my Savior. I receive you now. Amen. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10 that if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, salvation has taken place. What you believe in your heart causes righteousness to you, for you to have a right standing with God and for you to confess what you believe in your heart. The Bible says that you literally access what salvation has purchased for you and for me. I want to challenge you to do something tonight. Personal message me, Michael Lagaris. Direct message me right here on Facebook. You can, uh, if you have received Jesus for the first time, I want you to personally direct message me. Let me give me some information. I want to personally send you some information. I'd love to send you a Bible if you need one, and I'd love to give you information on how you can begin this journey with Jesus and how you can continue to look up for your redemption is coming close. Jesus is coming soon. If you don't have a, a church family, would you join us right here on a weekly basis, 7 o'clock on Wednesday nights and 8.30 and 11 on Sunday mornings? We would love for you to join our online church family here in this median time while we're not gathering together at Victory Christian Center's Warren Campus. But when that lift, when this ban is lifted and we're allowed to uh, get back together and gather I just talked to someone today from our church. We were making phone calls and she said, Pastor, can you imagine what that first Sunday back is going to look like? I said, it might be revival. People might be getting raised from the dead, set free, <laughs> healed. It's going to be an absolute shouting event and we would just love to invite you. Stay tuned here. Listen for when we, uh, we release us all to come back into the church building. But until then, you are the church. And I want to challenge you even tonight. After you get off of this call, you've got the rest of this week to change your world. And I just want to bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Be blessed. We sang a song earlier tonight called The Blessing. May his face of favor shine upon you. May this blessing be to your family, to your children, and to their children from generations to come. May you be blessed. May you know, may you know the Lord's favor. May you know and understand and discern the signs that we're living in. And may you look up for your redemption is drawing close. We love you from all of the Ligaris family here in our living room, even Roxy, who's passed out here next to me. We love you, we bless you, and we pray that you have an amazing Holy Week. We can't wait to join with you again on Friday, Good Friday, for communion right here with Bishop and Pastor Kathy at noon Eastern time. And then at 7 p.m. with our family, we'll be partaking of uh, communion and doing some worship on Good Friday. And uh, again, we hope to see you. We hope you'll join us. Uh, there is power in the blood of the Lamb, and our faith is how we apply the blood of Jesus to our hearts. Amen? God bless you guys. We hope to see you again soon. Talk to you. Bye-bye.